Hello, hello, and welcome to a special edition of Blah Blah Black Sheep, typically a weekly yarny podcast where I answer your questions. Um, if you watched episode eight, I briefly mentioned the event that I went to last weekend and told you that I had so much to say about it that I could not fit it into a traditional episode of Blah Blah Black Sheep. So this is a special episode where I'm going to be talking all about a really cool event that I went to uh, just this last weekend. And I'm just going to tell you about it and my experience, give a little review so that you can hear what it was like and um, maybe we'll see each other there next year. So. This last weekend, I went to Stitch Up Chicago, and the way that I got there was my friend Michelle of Tales of Knots. Um, there were several Detroit makers, which she's from Detroit, um, that she's friends with who were working at the event, and she said, it sounds like a lot of fun. I want to go. But I don't want to go alone. Does anyone want to come with me? Which I totally understand. Um, and I said, sure. Chicago is just a drive for me, so I didn't have as far to go. She and I shared a hotel room. It was so much fun spending time with her. We, you know, we talk all the time. She's my tech editor and good friend, but we don't actually get to like hug each other very often, so it was good to meet in person. Um, my friend Ashley, who does live in Chicago, came up for part of the event, and and that was just lovely and marvelous and great. So, um, the first thing I want to do is read to you the mission statement of Stitch Up Events because I think it's really fabulous, and I think they were very true to it. So. I'm just going to read it verbatim off of my tablet. So our mission, Stitch Up Events, creates a safe space to come together, build a fiber community one stitch, or building a fiber community one stitch at a time. The purpose of each Stitch Up experience is to allow crafters to connect, foster an inclusive community, and celebrate our love for fiber arts. All techniques are embraced and all are welcome. That was so true. It was, I mean, you can even see in my shirt, knitting needles, crochet hook. It was, you know, a lot of places and people say that they're inclusive of all crafts, but then they like only talk about knitting. Hey, knitters, knit this, knit whatever, you know. And as a crocheter, you feel like, I, know, I hear you saying that you're inclusive and I don't feel like you have animosity towards me, but maybe the actions don't show as much inclusivity, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that's hard for people, you know, people who knit naturally talk knitting first and people who crochet naturally talk crochet first. And, uh, but this was super, a super inclusive event. There was a, a diversity of people and crafters that was really, really just lovely, lovely to see. So let's see if I can figure out. Okay, <laughs> get to my notes now. All right, so that's their mission statement. I would say 100% stayed super true to that. Um, and that, that absolutely enhanced the event. Absolutely. There were, um, there was a lot of diversity there as far as age of people, um, crafts, um, ethnicity, all sorts of diversity there. Um, you know, it was really, really, really lovely. Um, so I want to talk about the schedule and just give you an overview of what the event looked like. The event was kind of, <laughs> it's an all-inclusive yarn event, which when, I don't know, I've never, I say this having never done an all-inclusive vacation. Um, when I think all-inclusive, I think like everything's rolled in, you pay one big fee and like it's just done. 
As far as a yarn event goes, I think this was incredibly all inclusive. So what you, so I should say, back up. There were several levels of, of buy-in to this. You could do um, an all access pass. You could do an early bird all access pass. You could buy uh, individual events and like chunks of time separately, which is what my friend Ashley did. I bought the all inclusive early bird pass. So I believe that was like a little bit of a discount and like a couple bonuses. Like I got, I got a shirt, which I love this shirt. I'm in strong debate over, I want to try to tie dye it. I don't know. I'm really liking the, oh, I'm really liking the, the bold contrast. And this red is not like a red red. It's like a maroony you know is my red. Anyways, so I got that. I got to choose one of the colors in my bag. And so those were the things in the all-inclusive pass. So I did start to finish everything that was included. Things that were not included were travel, which I think is pretty typical because you don't know what, how people are going to travel. Even in like all-inclusive vacations, you I think you have to kind of get there yourself. Um, and lodging was not included. And um, so my friend Michelle and I decided to stay at the hotel that the event was hosted at, which was super convenient. I drove down and uh, valeted my car and then didn't touch it until it was time to leave, which was lovely um, to have everything all together there. So travel and um, sleeping arrangements were not included. Um, but all of the food was included, um, which we can talk about that a little bit. Um, and all the supplies you needed for all of the crafting was included, which was super cool. So the event started on Friday afternoon with, I'm going to try, <laughs> I should probably just pull up the, uh, page again and make sure I'm giving you all the right information here. So the event started with, um, so the event started, sorry, Friday afternoon with a little meet and greet and a, um, and um, some little like snacks um, at Nina, which is a yarn shop in Chicago, which is a little confusing <laughs> to me because um, Nina is also a town right next to me. <laughs> so sometimes I talk about the town and sometimes I was talking about the yarn shop. Um, so we went to Nina, uh, lots of people were there. I will say it was really lovely. They organized group Ubers from the hotel to Nina. And then at the end of the event from Nina back to the hotel, again, as someone who's not from a big city and doesn't love driving around and all the parking stuff, it makes me anxious not to know these things. Uh, it was lovely to just be able to park my car, get in an Uber, chit chat with some other ladies as we drove there um we were talking to this one lady and she was saying oh i'm from here where are you from and we were all kind of going around and i was like going back and forth to saying whether i was like uh from a place south of green bay because most people outside the area don't really know my exact city or saying that i was from appleton which i realized i should just say appleton because more people know it than I thought they would because uh, of Lawrence University. So anyway, so I said, oh, I'm from Appleton. And the lady in the front seat of the Uber like whirls around and is like, what? I'm from Appleton. <laughs> Which was hilarious. I met quite a few people that either ha knew the area, had been to the area, uh, had friends that lived in the area, had kids that went to Lawrence or friends, kids that went to Lawrence. I talked up casting on my local yarn shop, which is like a block away from Lawrence's campus. I talked them up a lot like, oh, next time you come to Lawrence, you must go to the yarn shop. Come on a Wednesday or a Sunday and I'll see you there. 
<laughs> um, it was a fun event. The shop was closed um, to people not in the event. So it was fun to know that everybody that was there was at the event. I met and chatted with lots of fun people there. Um, and just really, I got to uh, know and introduce myself to some of the participants. So it was a, that was a lot of fun. The one downside of that was um, Michelle had not eaten lunch. <laughs> and by the time we got there, there was almost no food left. So um, she was hungry. And frankly, by the end of it, I was quite hungry too. <laughs> So, um, the next time it, it, we would definitely, uh, have a good lunch and maybe a little snack before we go. The food was amazing, but I think we each got like a couple, they were like, they were very fancy, you know, like those little teeny sandwich things, um, and a little, little bitty brownie. Um, so it was certainly not a, like meant to be a filling full meal, um, so after that, we went back to the hotel, we hung out a little bit, and then they had the uh, the kickoff officially at the hotel. And um, we got our um, swag bags, which was a huge tote bag of stuff. Um, and then we did a little... Um, Oh, I know what we did. There was um, a kit in the swag bags that uh, was a hat. And so people, uh, we had a delicious dinner and and worked on those hats and kind of had like a welcoming and, um, and uh, this is what we're gonna be doing. Um, all of the yarn, you got to choose whether you were a knitter or a crocheter when you signed up. All of the yarn and knitting needles or crochet hooks were provided in your bag. Um, there was a little like muck up with UPS and the hooks and um, needles. So that ended up being a little chaotic, um, but that wasn't their fault. Um, I don't think I got quite what I was supposed to get there. I got like a double hook of one and no hook of another. And I have plenty of crochet hooks. So it was not a problem to me. I actually ended up gifting one of my crochet hooks to a knitter who knit and crocheted and she wanted to try to crochet one of the projects. And so she was like, oh, would anyone mind? And I was like, yeah, you can have mine. And she's like, are you sure? And I was like, uh, yes, I have several of this size at home. So I'm not, I'm not missing out. You're not stealing from me. <laughs> so then... We stayed the night, Michelle and I got up, we had brought some breakfast because we knew that Saturday morning was a brunch. I, be, because of my children, am an early riser. I knew I was not going to make it to 10 o'clock before I had coffee and <laughs> some food in my tummy. So we brought, I brought some stuff for us to eat there, but then it started with a brunch, which was delicious. Um, and then we, Oh, the next thing was uh, a cotton kit where you could knit or crochet a bag. Again, I, I guess I didn't say this for the hat. There were knit and crochet patterns for every single kit that was part of the event. There was a lot of conscious effort put into making sure that both knitters and crocheters felt comfortable. There were also there people there to help. I don't know about knitting because I didn't help anyone learn to knit, but I helped a couple people. Uh, one person in particular learned to crochet, another person just, a few people just like answering some questions. So if you needed assistance, there were people there to assist. Um, and so we did a, a bag. I'm, I'll show you all these things when I go through the, the swag bag. And then midday we did um, yarn bombing. Um, I forgot as the breakfast was going on that it was really a brunch. I would have grabbed an extra croissant um, because by the time dinner 
happened. I was so hungry. Um, there were some little snacks and um, we worked on a yarn bomb. I'll see if I can find a picture to share because um, it was it was neat. It turned out fun. I've never done a yarn bomb before. Anyways, so then we did a yarn tasting in the afternoon. That was super cool. That was probably my favorite thing of the whole event was the yarn tasting. They had four, five, seven uh, indie dyers there, and we got to go around to the tables. We got to meet them. We got to talk to them, hear about their stories and their inspiration for their colorways. And I got to meet, I think her name is Kristen of Crayo yarn, which is what my poppy shawl is made out of. And she's lovely and so sweet. And I, sh Michelle, because she's my biggest cheerleader was like, Hey, she just designed a shawl out of your yarn. And she was like, Kristen was like, let me see. So I showed her and she was so supportive and lovely and send me pictures. And so I still need to do that, though I haven't forgotten. Um, so the yarn tasting was lovely. We got, there were hooks and yarn and ne knitting needles on every table. And so um, we got to actually play with the yarn. Um, it was a lot of fun. And then that evening, they we each got a ball of really nice hand-dyed um, Asylum Fibers yarn in our bags. And then there was a knitting and a crochet shawl pattern that could be worked up with that one skein of yarn, which was really neat. Then in the evening, we had tacos, which I was famished for because, because I did not, I did not, there, mm, I, <laughs> I didn't plan my food super well, even though I never didn't get food at any of the things, there were several times that I was like, ooh, I'm real hungry. So I should have brought like some granola bars or something. And I had some stuff up in the room, but I never brought it with me to the event, but I should have. Um, delicious taco bar. And then Mary Maxim provided kits and they did a really cool thing where they had a knit, a crochet and a Tunisian crochet version for these kits, which was super duper fun. So that was Saturday night. At that point, um, Michelle and I said good night and goodbye to everyone. Um, there were what they called a bonus day. Um, and we didn't participate in that. And I, I don't know, I'd be curious to talk to someone who did participate in that day and see how many people, um, participated. Uh, I think it's considered a bonus day because like food wasn't provided for anything, I don't think. And, um, and they knew people would need to fly home and stuff. So there were some events that you could attend. Um, but, but as I said, we did not. So, uh, there was installation of the yarn bomb that we did, which I, I need to go search down some pictures and see like how that all went down. Cause that's really cool. And then, um, my wonderful and marvelous friend, Natalie of Detroit Knots, uh, taught some Tunisian classes at Nina. And I think those were purchased separately. I don't think that that was part of, um, part of the event, but something you could do if you were still there. I, the reason I didn't participate in any of that stuff and I, Michelle tagged along with me is because I ended up teaching a learn to crochet class at a brand new knitting store in Chicago called Bloom and Spindle. And I met Robin, uh, the owner, uh, when we were in Chicago last summer and she and I reconnected, it was so much fun to teach. Uh, at her class. So that's what, that's what I did. And by the time my class was done, it was time for Michelle to go to the airport. It was time for me to drive back home. I got home as the kid, as it was time to like read to the kids and tuck them into bed. It was really quite lovely. And I have to, I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to show you is all my yarn, both that came in the event bag and would have purchased. <laughs> um, but before I do that, I have to give a big shout out to my husband. Uh, he held the fort down, man. And not like in the, I came home and the house was a disaster, but thank God everyone was still alive. No, like the house was clean. The dishes were done. Um, the children had been bathed and were ready for bed. 
And not that this is like some amazing feat of anything, um, because I strong, we both strongly believe that both parents should be able to fully parent our children and that one of us is not better at that than the other or more capable, though our children disagree. Brian went on a trip, <laughs> a business trip, a couple weeks ago, and he was supposed to be gone for the whole week. Long story short, he wasn't. But when, as he was leaving, Holden, my oldest, looks at me and goes, are you sure you can take care of us for a whole week by yourself? And I was like, yes, yes, I can. And then when I go to leave, my youngest goes, Mom, I'm just not sure Dad can do this. <laughs> uh, hopefully we proved both of them wrong. My husband was amazing. On top of that, we have this huge upright freezer in our garage. I'm pointing because it's over there. It half stopped working. He found that out on Saturday morning, maybe Friday night. Anyways, he dealt with that. He moved all of the stuff, tossed the stuff that had thawed too much, took stuff to his parents' house, um, called a repair person. Like, he was, as always, wonderful and amazing and supportive. So, big shout out to Brian um, for being just generally amazing. Okay, let's talk yarn. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is what we got in our uh, swag bags, which is a lot. And I'm going to try to I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly because I know I'm already 20 minutes in. So I've already talked about um, the I've already talked about where all these pieces went. So I'm just going to show them to you now. So events. This was the Mary Maxim kit. This is the yarn that you needed and all three patterns for the cowl that happened Saturday night. Um, we got a pattern with knit and crochet and this was, I did, did early access so I got to choose my colorway. This was my colorway I chose. You can see I did not make the shawl. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this was the yarn. Uh, this is a universal yarn, which I follow them and have never used any of their yarn. So it was kind of fun to get some of their yarn in the uh, kit. And um, this is like a pretty shiny. Let's see. What is this? This is 80% tensile, 20% wool. So it feels kind of cottony. Um, and, ooh, this is the the cotton yarn. This is the skein. Uh, every, we did not choose our colors for anything except for this one. I actually ended up trading Michelle uh, my color, and there was some trading going on. Um, Ashley, who came for uh, Friday night, she, I had kind of a mauve -y pink which is not my color, but is her color. And she had this kind of creamy color. And so she said, would you trade with me? And I was like, yeah, sure, of course. So um, I did not do the bag pattern that they um, had with this yarn, but I did start my own little bag that I, I think I'm gonna make into one of those wrist uh, project bags, you know, that has just like the little loop that you stick your yarn in there and then you can like walk and crochet and stuff. So that's, that's what I think I'm going to do. Okay. Then as just this, oh, so then we got some, um, Brava yarn from Recrochet. And they didn't really tell us what all this yarn was for. Some of it was just kind of floating around the bag and we got these like neon colors and we were all kind of like hmm that's not the color I would have chosen and then we found out later that they were for the yarn bombing of course because they wanted to be bright and really visible so I actually have from um Michelle and I two skeins of like hot orange and a skein of yellow um yarn that I might make <sighs> If I have the time ever. I might make the boys like a construction vest out of because they would think that was amazing. And I don't know where else I'm going to use neon orange. 
Um, so some Brava yarn, I ended up getting the really gorgeous colors of this really like purpley pink and um, purple. Let's see, this is called Eggplant and this is called Fairy Tale. Those are gorgeous. I do really love um, the Brava worsted weight yarn. I've used it quite a bit. It's one of my go-to acrylics, though I don't do acrylic much. And then we got, um, we got a couple pens and we got hooks from uh, We Crochet. We Crochet and Knit Picks were their sponsors for this. We got this cool um, needle uh, hook case, which is super handy. Um, it's kind of this shiny gold, which or cold silver, which I think is fun. Um, and we got, um, I, I unpacked and repacked all this. So this was not how it was packed in there. We got a couple stickers. We got um, a little tin of stitch markers, both uh, lock, locking and circle stitch markers. We got two um, tape measures, which never too many of these. I feel firmly about that. Uh, so we got two of those. And, um, and then each of the yarn dyers that was at the yarn tasting contributed um, some sort of mini skein to the um, to the bag. So, um, this is M1 Yarns. I, Jamie is from Detroit. And so I got to meet her and I got to meet all the yarn dyers, but she and I uh, became a little more friendly because she's from where Michelle is from. And she, uh, lots of gorgeous yarn. I wonder if I can find, I wonder if I can find my, uh, swatches as I talk about these yarn dyers. Um, okay, here's the swatch I made with her yarn at the yarn dang. It's this gorgeous, maroony, eggplanty gorgeousness. So that's one of her yarns as well. Um, let's see. Who is this? Oh, this is falling apart. This is, uh, I recognize the logo, but it's so small. Okay, let me see if I can find the yarn from her. That's not it. Is this it? Nope. I think this is it. I think this is it. Um, yes. Uh, Pearly Tricot yarn. She does small batch and the batch, like none of the batches are the same. Look at those gorgeous colors. And then this was, this was the mini skein from her in the swag bag. Gorgeous. Um, Asylum Fibers, which is who did um, this. And uh, let me see if I can find her. Yes. And then this was um, the swatch I did at the yarn tasting of her yarn. This was a zebra yarn. I picked this because I'd never played with a zebra yarn before. And it was lots of fun. And it turned out really fun and pretty. And she was lovely. She had lots of gorgeous samples. They all had lots of gorgeous samples. But she had a really pretty sample of the zebra yarn, which, like I said, I had not... Um, ever played with before. So it was neat to see how different colorways uh, went on um, mitten gold with the zebra yarn worked up. This is uh, the mini skein from Distortion Fibers. I met Emily at the um, Nina uh, yarn event the first night. And she is just fabulous. Love her and her friend Julie. They were so much fun. Uh, let me tell you how different she and I are in our color choices though. Uh, she was like, this is just, this was like the most bold I've ever done. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? And I'm like, I mean, that's kind of neutral for me, <laughs> but I will definitely be uh, finding her yarn. I took a picture of one of her skeins on the table. Cause I was like, I need that colorway in my life. And she had said she hadn't quite, um, 
she hadn't quite gotten all of the colorways that were on her table listed on her website. So I'm going to have to check back in on that. Okay. These are from uh, Movers and Makers. This is, uh, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this. This is a yarn that is just for Nina and the owner and um, uh, blah, 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 Kristen of Crayo work together to make this yarn line. This is a bulky super bulky. It's a bulky, I think, a chunky yarn. Uh, then that's my swatch from them. Lots of pretty solids there, which is wonderful. And then, 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 um, RMR Yarn Co. This was their mini skein that they contributed. Sparkly pink. Um, and Michelle and I actually switched because she really liked mine. Um, and I was like, I mean, I'm not super committed to either of them. So um, that was that. And then this is what I worked up in their yarn, which I love probably more than the sparkles. Look at that. It's like this kind of lavendery base with this really like pow of color. So beautiful. And then I don't know know what I did. If I have a Crayo, maybe I don't have a Crayo sample. There were coupon codes from all of these designers, but I have to show you my Crayo swatch because I'm obsessed with it. Look, I took this really fun um, yarn that was like a gray base with uh, spots of color and I held it with a hot, hot pink mohair with the hot pink mohair matched the edge to my, and then I tried a, like a, a row of just the mohair and then holding them back together again. So much fun. Probably going to have to do something related to that down the road. And there were coupons and just really, really, really lovely, uh, swag bag. So let me, let me put all this away. Oh, shoot. I just sipped one of my ends into the crud. All right. I'm just going to real quick dump this all back in here so I can show you then what I purchased. <laughs> you wouldn't think I'd go away without purchasing some yarn, right? Michelle was asking me at the um, sip and stitch night or like the Nina, are you going to buy anything? And I was like, well, yeah, because one of my favorite things about my poppy shawl is that it's not just my poppy shawl. It's also a memory of the trip we made, all of us ladies together down to Chicago. Um, and so it's a gorgeous design and memories. Okay, so then we had the opportunity to buy more uh, Asylum Fibers yarn. And I, I was obsessed with this. This was the color I picked. They had additional of it. And then a gray, there was a nice little discount for the um, participants. And so I knew I wasn't going to use this for their um, specific um, project. But these are DK weights. So guess what? Um, there was someone who looked at my poppy shawl and said, that's really pretty. I hope you'll design something in a DK weight yarn. I may have to do that. So that was some, this is a purchase that I made actually at, and it's coming up really pinky there. It's more of a deep purple. This is more uh, true to color than when I get it real close to the camera, but it has lots of like variations and speckles in it. It's not just all solid. It's real pretty, real pretty. Definitely going to make something out of that. Um, and then at Nina, I found out from one of the ladies I was, actually, I think it was from Emily of Distortion Fibers. I was kind of looking, I was very hemming and hawing. It took me a very long time to make my, make my final choices. Um, and she said, oh, this is really sad. I don't think this dyer is dying anymore. So then we all kind of decided like, if we we're gonna get something, now's the time because it's gonna be gone and you're never gonna be able to get it again. Nothing like scarcity to motivate. <laughs> you into grabbing something. So 
uh, originally I had picked up these two and I'm calling these my neutral. <laughs> this is about as neutral as I get. I thought they were really gorgeous. I would love some more shawls that are kind of, um, you know, not like solid necessarily, though I do think I'm going to make a solid gray shawl here because there have been a couple times that I've been like, oh, this, this, not this specific outfit, but this outfit has a lot going on and really, really benefit from just a nice neutral <laughs> shawl. But this is gorgeous. These are um, less traveled yarn. So if you see some of these and you want them, rumor has it, she's going out of business and snag them while you can. You can see at the ends there, all those really gorgeous speckles. So those were really pretty. And then um, I was like, I'm just, I'm just doing two. And then I went over and saw Michelle and Ashley were like debating their color combinations on a table. And, and um, they decided against, Ashley decided against this colorway. And I was like, well, that's just like 100% my jam, right? With those teals and grays and so I guess I'll take that one too. <laughs> and then Michelle decided against this one, which is like this gorgeous deep maroon, but it's also got this pop of like golden yellow in it. Mm, it's so pretty. And I mean, she's going out of business, so I can't ever get them again. I had to, right? <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. Again, I tend to splurge because now I have all those memories wrapped up in that too. So that's fun. And then, um, like I said, I taught a class at Bloom and Spindle on Sunday. It was a blast. I love meeting new people. The ladies were fantastic. Great senses of humor. Um, they all did really great picking up crochet. And I can't go, I can't wait to go back and see them again. If you were at my class, thank you. It was lovely. Um, but I had to buy some yarn from Robin too, right? This was her grand opening weekend. She had some, it was, it was a hard pick. She has lots of great yarn in there and different yarn. That was the other thing. I was like, she had some gorgeous Malabrigo and I was like, no, I can buy Malabrigo at my local shop here. I want something that I can't get at my local shop. And this is what I found. This is um, from, it's just Yarn Co. Uh, Primrose at Homestead Sport. <sighs> I have bought, you would, I was gonna say you would be ashamed, but you wouldn't be ashamed and you wouldn't even be surprised because you're a yarn person too. Somebody who didn't know better might be ashamed of the amount of one skein of yarn I have purchased saying, I'll make a pair of socks out of those. I have um, this much of my very first pair of socks knit. <laughs> I have lots of yarn waiting. So I grabbed this one thinking this would be a really fun pair of socks. So look at this. The yarns are like twisted and spun together. They're marled now. Um, Robin did say that this works up with uh, slightly harder color changes, not like a real gradient like some other um yarn dyers and spinners who uh, spin similar looking yarn but i thought perfect for a pair of socks and i was gonna do a really bold and then i thought no and so then i picked a real neutral and then i was like nah and so i went in between with this one this is called primrose i believe is the colorway and it's it's gorgeous oh no 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 let me read that label again. The company is called Primrose Yarn Co. It's covered by the sticker. So I was, con I was confused if I had by that. But the Midnight Rambler is the color name. So check them out. So much fun. So that's my yarn haul. Um, and yeah. There you go. That's all of it. I did want to say just like a brief overall impression of um, the Stitch Up event. It was um, a lot of fun. I had a blast meeting new people. I'm one of those people who like, I'm an extrovert. That's probably not going to surprise you. But sometimes I like have to be in the right mood to... Um, to people, to people, you know, just generally speaking. And um, I just went in saying like, Sarah, you gotta be on. 
You got to be friendly. You got to be outgoing. You can't sit back in a corner and hope people come to you. You've got to like see people and say hi and just chit chat with whoever is next to you in line. I sat by this lovely older woman at the yarn tasting for a while and she and I chit chatted. Um, I, I just, I just talked to everybody who would talk to me <laughs> and I met so many great people. It was, however, as someone who is used to working by herself, I'm here alone in my house most weekdays with it quiet. It was a lot of noise stimulation. By the end of the night, I was like, oh. Um, I think there were about 150 people there, so that alone was just noise of people like seeing each other and chit-chatting. We did it at the hotel, like bar and restaurant area and so there was always kind of like dance music pumping in the background and um we <laughs> quite a few of us said like oh, I just need to like go outside and like soak in some quiet <laughs> um uh, there was also like lots of like shouting to get attention of people which is necessary um but like that was kind of like added to the overstimulation factor i guess um but all in all just a really great time i will say that my impression as a participant is that this was mostly meant for crafters and not for designers which is totally fine but as a designer, well, I should say as a designer, I had so much fun going there and meeting people, designing, like I said, I'm usually here alone in my office doing my thing. And I got to meet some people who like I wore my earrings and they were like, oh, I know you, I've made those. And that was just like so fulfilling to like interact face to face with people who uh, enjoy my designs. So that was super super fulfilling. Um, but as a designer, I did not have the, the time or the desire for all of the kits that we got. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we probably added, what was it? Four project for, so people who started all the projects, they ended up with like four additional projects going home with four widths because there wasn't enough time to finish any of them. I don't know. I don't know that I saw anybody that had completely finished any of the projects, which is fine. Um, but as somebody who doesn't have a lot of time for personal things, let alone personal things that I didn't really specifically pick out, um, I probably won't use any of the yarn for any of the kits. Um, and it was very on the fence about how much I really, uh, will even use some of the yarn that ended up in my that I got in my swag bag. So, but I'm sure it won't go to waste. We talked about donating or maybe doing a yarn bombing in our neighborhoods with uh, the acrylic stuff that maybe I wouldn't probably lean towards. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say, especially if you are a crafter, it was a great event. There, there was lots of great people there. Um, I don't think I met a single person that I was like, hmm. everyone was so friendly and so nice and, um, a cheery and lovely. There were several, several ladies who came all by themselves, which I think was a so brave and B just the best. Like no one's, I, I didn't see anyone just like sitting alone in a corner. Um, Almost every time Michelle and I sat down, we had each other, but we met new people. We we almost never sat by the exact same people, and it was it was just a really great time. So, if you have questions about my specific experience, or if you have had a yarn convention experience, I'd love to hear about it. So, um, comment below with your experiences or any questions you have. And I hope I gave you some perspective and maybe, I mean, I will tell you one of the things is I definitely am like, mm -hmm, want to do this again. Should I make an effort to go to Rhinebeck next year? 
I would really, really like to. I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way to New York this year, but I would really, really like to. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my experience and my recommendation. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you are still here, thank you. Thank you for joining me. You're the best and happy crafting.